Hey, I'm Tommy. And I'm Patty. And we are Alderman, Alderman Farms. Farms. Welcome back to Sustainable Saturdays at Alderman Farms. What are we going to sustain today, Patty? Well, we're going to talk about sustainable animals. Critters and, and such. Yes, uh, our livestock, chickens. And I'm going to tell you right now, we're not sustainable in this area. <laughs> uh, we have a plan and... Um, hopefully you can add some good insight to our plan. Um, and I want to cover this from the very beginning because we've already talked about water. We've talked about water for our animals. And number one, we have runoff from our roof when we have buckets that we could catch water in. We have a well and we have a well bucket. Uh, we have not gotten the rope for the well bucket, but we need to do that. That's our plan. And we do have a creek on our property that that would be very laborious um, but it would be uh, we could get water from the creek um, also we could bring the animals to the creek and we do have plans of putting in a pond one day so that covers water um, I think we could sustain life with 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 what we have for water would not be very easy um, but the first animals I want to talk to talk about is mainly really our poultry uh, we have chickens, we have 19 hens and four roosters, and we have one gobbler and one hen turkey. And midget, midget white turkeys. Yeah, midget white turkeys. They're smaller turkeys. Um, they do eat a lot of feed. We do feed our chickens. They have... I know why they call them gobblers now. <laughs> it's not because they go gobble, gobble, gobble. It's because they go gobble, gobble, gobble when they're eating. Yes, they like to eat. Um but we have a, a very large fenced-in area with a, a metal wire. What do you call it? Uh, field fencing. Field fencing, yeah. Um, permanent and, fence. Yes, permanent fence. And we also have um, electrified... Uh, poultry netting. Poultry netting. From Premier One Supplies. Yes, that we absolutely love. And we do have a solar charger for Several. that. Yes, and so we have the chicken area made to where they can have a lot bigger area. So they have a lot of room to scratch and everything, but we do supplement them with feed. And I'm going to tell you this, from times when we've run out of feed or I didn't feed for a few days, um, when there's plenty for them to eat, it does help their laying. Sure. They lay a lot more with Clarify having... that, because the way you said that, you kind of changed your thought, you reversed your thought in the middle. Having... Plenty of feed increases their laying. Their laying goes down. Yes. When if you run the out laying of feed, pellets. Yeah. Right. If you run out of laying pellets, uh, or or I guess you you don't have to have commercial feed. But the point is, no, you don't have to have commercial feed. But it does make mm, them produce more eggs. Yeah. That's why I like having a flock of nineteen. I do sell eggs occasionally, um, but I don't know that I ever want to have. It's just Tommy and I mainly. But I don't think I would ever want to have less than 12 hens because they don't lay so well. And we have um, Delaware chickens. And so they they don't have the highest laying capability, but they do lay good, and they lay good in the wintertime. But um, they, they were originally a meat chicken, the meat chicken in the 1940s, I believe. Um, and so that's why I have them, because they do lay pretty good, and they have a little bit meatier carcass. A little bit better carcass. They, yeah, they not, not probably not a lot. I'm really wanting to do um, uh, a sex link with them. You can I can cross the Delaware hens with a Rhode Island red rooster, and I'll have sex link hens. It means I'll better tell roosters and hens apart when they hatch, and sex links lay a lot of eggs. So I would like to do that maybe this year. Surprise. Okay. No, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so back to feeding our chickens. That's the main thing of uh, being sustainable with our chickens. We do give them scraps. Uh, they do get garden extras. Um, but that's really not enough to supplement them. Uh, we do have a little orchard that we have planted that's next to the chicken pen. It's a baby orchard. Yeah, it's not producing yet. And what the plan is there, any spoiled produce or whatever that we get out of there, it's, it's, I mean, we could just toss it over the fence. It's very close. And also, one thing that we've thought about, too, is using the, um, the netting or eventually fencing it in, in, it, fencing it in permanently 
uh, and having a little gate to let the chickens out there where they can go and clean up anything that's fallen that we didn't harvest. Um, so they would have access to fresh bugs out there too. Yes, they would. They would have a new new area. Um, but I'm going to tell you this: in worst case scenario, if you know we uh, couldn't buy our feed or whatever, we would probably use the wire netting for our dogs and let the chickens have free reign of the yard. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course, I'll, I would keep them out of certain areas and everything, but, uh, you know, I would probably uh, end up doing that and keep the dogs reined in. Not that our dogs necessarily uh, like to get after the chickens, but they would. I mean, they're dogs, and they're going to chase things that run from them. Yeah. Um, Plus, we're talking about life-sustaining, you know. they. Yeah, we couldn't afford to lose a chicken. Um, no, I'm talking about the dogs may be hungrier than they normally are. Very true, very true. Also, one plan that we have is to plant elderberries. Uh, we've been talking about this for a couple of years now. We do have elderberries that grow on our property, and we just have to identify them and move them. We would like to move them a little closer, some, not all. But we thought about a good place to put them would be along the, the fence, uh, the chicken fence because then they can grow up and then they can actually drop on the ground for the chickens to eat them. So mm -hmm. that's that's our plan for the chickens. Um, you know, but I, I think mainly the, the big plan, of course, planting extra food and stuff for them, but the big plan would be that they would be free range and they would have a lot of range to range on. So uh, next would oh, be... Oh, what? That's not all with chickens. Oh, it's not? Nope. Tell me what else. What do we have on the back porch right now? Oh, that's right. Chicks. That's right. We have 50 Freedom Ranger chicks. Yes. In a homemade brooder box with a 250 watt heat lamp down in there. They just, chicks just arrived the day before yesterday, right? Mm hmm. And we're feeding them chick starter. And we're feeding them chick starter. Yeah. And that's what are you going to do when you don't have electricity? Well, I am going to let my hens raise chicks. Uh, we've had we've done this before. Um, now they don't raise 50 at a time. It'll just be a few at a time. Of course, if we're dealing with um, needing to sustain life, we're not going to be wanting to kill 50 chickens at one time. Right, because anyway, we wouldn't have a freezer, maybe. Right. So um, we ha I have had success with uh, our Delaware, and we do have two Bielefelder hens still. Um, we had tried that breed a long time ago, and I still do have two of those hens, and they get broody also. Uh, the Delaware beautiful. Not, they just don't lay worth a flip. Yeah, they don't. They don't lay real great. But um, anyway, we've kept them around. I love their coloring and everything of them. But so uh, they're not the Delaware are not super broody, but they do get broody uh, every year. We have at least two that we have to deal with yeah. with broodiness, and the Del and the Bielefelders the same way. So anyway, so that's an answer there. Now that's not guaranteed. But that is yeah helpful. because sometimes a sometimes a hen a modern hen will go broody, but not stay broody through the cycle. Right. You know she she will go broody. After ten days or fifteen days, 10, she's 15 done. Days she's done. And it takes twenty one to hatch out chicks. So, all right, now am I done with chickens? Uh yeah. Okay. So next we're going to move on to pigs, and a lot of it's uh some some of it's the same. We we do feed our uh, pigs commercial pig feed. Um, Supplement. I mean, we feed yeah. them, you know, but we want we we feed all of our animals because we want them to come when yeah. they hear us, yeah. and that's the best way to do it. They really like their feed, but um, the majority of the pigs' diet they get grazing. Grazing. Stuff, that's you know, exactly right. Um, and they're on what twenty acres right now? Twenty five. Twenty five acres, um, and we do have the fencing, the uh, net wire fencing. Um, uh, Electric fencing. Is it net? It's not net wire. But anyway, the poultry netting from Premier works great with pigs, yep. too. It's not actually the pig fencing. It's We still use the chicken fencing with the pigs, and it works. I recommend, you know, they Premier One makes a pig version. A, you know, they make versions of the, of yeah, the electrified for the netting animals. for all the different animals. Mm -hmm. We recommend just get the poultry netting and use it for all of them, especially mm -hmm. now that they've got, 48, well, they may, I say now, they may have al always had it. But get the 48 inch. We have a 42 inch. And we've also got a couple of pieces, a couple of sets of the 48. 
And I like the 48. You get to 48 inches, and you can keep anything in there. Mm-hmm. We've kept a cow inside mm-hmm. yeah. of it. They, they, yeah. they don't like to get popped. That's right. So the poultry netting works for everything. Mm-hmm. If you get the pig netting, you can't use that for poultry because they'll hop right through yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, because the holes are bigger. And the it. goats will jump over yeah, pig netting because it's, it's shorter. Mm-hmm. So get the poultry netting, and you're set for, mm-hmm. for any critter you need to maintain Mm -hmm. and with a solar panel that's very uh, a solar charger that's sustainable that's right um but anyway so we have that that poultry netting that we can use for the pigs too um also we have multiple areas that are fenced with uh metal wire permanent fencing and that we can rotate through uh so and we, we we have other property besides what is fenced um, if need be, we could herd, you know, the pigs to other areas and kind of watch them, that kind of stuff. Um, well, you know, American guinea hogs, they kind of home, they kind of have a homing mechanism. Yeah, right. Uh, it's not that they won't roam, but they tend to rehome at night. They come home at night. So, uh, again, I feel like a broken record. We're not talking doom and gloom. We didn't, we're not projecting doom and gloom. We're what ifing. What if doom and gloom? What what if, you know, bad, bad, bad times hit? Well, if it's that bad, I'm turning my pigs out. Yeah. And and the we'll, neighbors will be glad because they'll get some meat too. So they'll right. help us watch our pigs. I mean, we got 116 that is connected to neighbors. You know, so the pigs could roam, and and we would just make sure we had a little something to give them in the evening. To keep them coming back mm-hmm. to home base, and they know when, when they're supposed to be fed too. They do. They, and they start. They, they, they hear they've got you an outside. internal clock. Yeah, they'll start hollering to us. Okay, y'all coming to feed us now? So if I, if I shake that bucket within ear, within ear, man, they just slobber. They're ready just to eat. Bit hanging out, mm-hmm. and they're hollering. You know, they know. So. So, uh, but I did have that on the list is to uh, to grow extra feed for the pigs. Uh, one thing. Um, We'll talk about now, um, with pigs, you can actually um, let them have charcoal from burned wood uh, for a natural warmer. Also, pumpkin seeds is a good natural warmer, and pumpkins is something good that you could feed your animals, too. Mm -hmm. Chickens like to to peck through it and everything, too. So, uh, And I also have on here scraps, of course, and then extra milk. And that leads me into the goats. Pigs love milk, by the way. And we have four dairy goats, and we do have extra milk sometimes that we can feed the pigs. And they really, really like that. Um, And it's the same, I hate to sound like a broken record, but it's the same scenario with the goats. We have the the areas that we typically keep the goats in that are, it's metal wire. But we also extend their area with the poultry netting. Actually, we just moved two goats today that are going to be kidding soon, that's closer to the house. And there they have the big chicken area that's that's permanent fencing, and then we have an area set up where they can go and browse and eat some other stuff. Inside the poultry netting. Yeah, inside the, inside the poultry netting. And what's so neat about it, too, is that you don't have to make a round perimeter. Uh, we actually have it... The poultry netting is one side of the perimeter, and then the woven wire is the other perimeter. So it really works out good. Yep. Okay. Um, that enables you to, to double the amount of area you can mm-hmm. use with uh, cover with the poultry netting. Mm-hmm. One thing that uh, I think that we right now we're without a buck. Uh, I do have one that uh, that a friend of mine has that um, that just was born that we'll be getting him. So we send me the picture and I'll show it right now. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, Isn't it cute? it's a Nigerian dwarf and we're, what we're wanting to do is to go to a little bit smaller goat. So we're going to cross our goats that we have with a Nigerian dwarf and see how that goes. But anyway, that's one thing I want to do is to keep a buck because without a buck, they can't get bread and if they're not bred, they don't produce milk. So, um, we would uh, want to always keep a buck, and I'm excited about going to a smaller buck. I hope all that works out. Um, but we'd, like I said, we have four does, and we would probably reduce our herd down to two, um, unless uh, we had some people that were wanting to get milk, because it would be a lot less laborious for us feeding two goats rather than four, because we honestly well, do not need four goats. No, but we would have to think about that and, and balance it with other considerations, like the pigs. You know, I mean, 
Um, yeah, like with our neighbors and everything. Right, because in a scenario where, again, in, in an end of the world kind of thing, which if it's an end of the world, hallelujah, we're, we're going to be with Christ. And it ain't right. going to be that big a deal. But you know what I'm saying, in a survival uh, scenario like that, then I'm, I'm, I'm assuming I don't have a job anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and that means I'm here full time. And so it may be worth it to milk four does to have the milk for the pigs. You know, I don't know. Well, that's, I mean, that's it's something true. to consider. That's true because the goats are fairly easy to feed. Um, and we do, we do supplement their food uh, with feed. Um, one thing that we do do for the goats is that we actually cut things down for them uh, and to throw over the fence if we're clearing an area or whatever. And so we will continue to do that um, in the in the worst case scenario. And another thing, you know, the goats like to follow you and be around you. Ours are pretty tame. And so one thing we can do, <laughs> Tomas, one thing uh, we can do is actually bring them out to eat. Uh, they used to always uh, have a, uh, back in the olden days, they would, they didn't have a lot of fencing. They would bring the goats out. Uh, they'd have a shepherd, you know, yeah. to, to watch the animals and everything. I and think so, I know where we could find a shepherd. Yeah, shepherd boy. Yeah. <laughs> so Tomas, um, I think, has been out playing basketball with his Uncle Corey, mm-hmm. which explains why Tomas doesn't have a shirt on, because I'm guessing his Uncle Corey, Corey doesn't have a shirt on. That's right. Yeah, Corey wears a shirt when he goes to church and goes to work. That's yeah. about it. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so, you know, that, um, I think the goats are fairly sustainable. Yeah. Um, I think they're, they'd be the, well, I, I don't know. Which, the pigs would be pretty, well. It really also, everything so far has sounded pretty doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, we're going to get down to our dogs and cats. Mm. Uh, that's where it would be kind of hard. We have a lot of cats, and they do uh, forage for their own food. Um, I think I'm not a, sorry y'all, I'm not a big cat person. I think cats are useful and I think every farm should have a cat. They might not have, need to have as many cats as we have though. Um, I like them. They're, you know, I, I like cats and everything, but I'm just I'm more of a dog person. And so right now we have, how many dogs do we have? Three, four, five, six, we up to six dogs we got, again. We got Toby, Sugar Bear, Tootsie. That's the geriatric ward. That's There's the geriatric the ward. There's like 70 years amongst them. Mm-hmm. Uh, got blue ace and cooper yeah so we got six yeah so we have six dogs again wow and princess and macy next Corey door. and kayla have princess and macy yeah so we actually have that's the most dogs we've had on the farm in a long time eight mm-hmm. dogs on the farm but anyway mm-hmm. we're responsible for six um so that that would be an issue um feeding them uh and one thing that we would do is be uh hunt for them, squirrels, rabbits, uh, rodents, you know, I guess, uh, smaller animals. Um, of course, we would be killing animals for us to eat, uh, so they would get the leftovers from that. Uh, so, you know, that's that's an issue of being able to feed our, uh, our dogs um, and cats, yeah. you know. And, and, I, and I really, the cats really do... And we do have, we have a lot of moles, um, them little an- animals that dig under the ground. The dogs find them all the time. Now, they don't eat them. They play uh, with them. They, pull, they just find them and kill them. Yeah, and, um, and I'm glad because those can really do some damage to a garden. But uh, I guess in that worst case scenario, I guess the dogs would have to eat moles maybe. So uh, one yeah, thing. That, that's a troublesome scenario. I mean, the cats, I think. Cats are a little closer to feral than yeah. than dogs are, and cats are gonna figure it out. They, yeah, the cats are first of all, if if they don't feel like they've got enough feed here, they ain't gonna stay here, and you can't keep them here. Right. And so they're gonna the cats are gonna hightail it, you know, looking for for better food sources, and of course increase their likelihood of be, likelihood of becoming, <laughs> becoming a food, food source. source. Yeah. Uh, the dogs are, are are gonna stick around and tough it out, and so. Those yeah. are things we'll have to figure out. You know, what can we, are there vegetables, way that you can prepare prepare vegetables for dogs? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. That That's something we need to do some more research on. Well, one thing that we tossed around the idea of, of rabbits, 
but then that opens up a whole nother door of being able to feed the rabbit. So I have free range rabbits written down. Um, I don't know. I've not done a lot of research into that. I know some people have played with having rabbits in colonies and stuff like that and letting them have the earth where they could, you know, do their thing naturally. Um, I would be interested in that um, in a, on a small scale. Um, but as for right you think now... About how, but how small scale could it be if you're feeding dogs? Well, with rabbits, that's the thing. You could go big scale really quick. That's true. You know, because they And plus, like you rabbits. said we got six dogs. Mm-hmm. Well, well, we don't want to wish them away because we love Toby and Tootsie and Sugar Bear. And we do. But they're not long for here, you know. Yeah, so not. we're. They're getting old. I, I old. doubt that we would have a earth-shattering turn of events to put us in, in survival mode before they're gone. That's, you know? that's very true. So that's we would true. only be dealing with, uh, with Blue and Ace and Cooper and then Corey and, and Kayla dealing with and Princess Cor- and, and, and Cooper Mason. is a small dog. But the other two are big dogs, so, yeah. which means they eat more. So, you know, that's just some of the thoughts. If you have any ideas on that, uh, please, please, please uh, put them down in the comments. Um, so, things that we would grow just for animals um, would be pumpkins. I, and I have melons on here, too, because the chickens really, really chickens like love melons, melons. And so do the goats. I don't know pigs. how... Pigs. Pigs love Oh, them. pigs do too. That's right. I don't know how nutritious that would be. The pumpkins would be very good for them. Mm-hmm. Pumpkins, you know, the seeds are a natural wormer, so that would be really good. And by the way, y'all, we don't worm our animals hardly ever. Hardly ever. Um, I don't think we've ever wormed the pigs, or maybe one of them. Uh, Big Mama. I had to worm her a couple yeah. times. We don't worm our chickens. And um, our goats, we do worm if they look like they need it, which is usually they don't. Yeah. And if... Uh, when they kid. We do always worm when they kid, just because it's a stress on their body. So they get wormed at least once a year, sometimes twice a year. So the pumpkin seeds would hopefully, and I, and what I, we need to do is, we need to plant pumpkins this year. We need to be on this regimen. There's no reason not to plant pumpkins. No. You know, for, for the animals. Yes, yeah. I mean, pr- I mean we can for, use they can be treats too. for them now, mm-hmm. sustenance later if needed. That's right, that's right. But one thing I added on here, and I may be saying this wrong, is mangle beets. Um, they're these huge beets. They get really, really big. And, I mean, like the pictures I've seen is, like, really big. Um, and I haven't ever grown them before. I do have some seeds, so I'm going to try that this year, hopefully. And, um... They're supposed to be really good animal feed. And so um, we would want to try those and grow those. Um, so I think I think we've covered everything that no, we've talked about. we ain't about. covered everything. Oh, we haven't. Oh, what am I forgetting? Bees. <gasps> That's right. The bees. I thought of them earlier, yeah. but I didn't put them on my list. So, the bees. So. You know, the bees are, bees are... The great thing about bees is that they're... they're and I know beekeepers are going to disagree with me but they're pretty sustainable Mm -hmm. um now if you get hit with disease or you know anything can happen so what what i need to do and and it just so happens i want to do this anyway patty wants to do this anyway is we need to expand our apiary we right now i've got one colony of bees and, yeah, and we and we want multiple colonies. We want multiple colonies. Just bees. because we eat honey, and we want to produce all of our own honey. Right. So, so I need to expand ultimately to 10, 20 colonies of bees. You know, ultimately. Wow. Yeah, so we'll start we need selling it. honey. Too. Well, but but <laughs> thinking about a survival scenario because you lose colonies. I mean, well, that's you, right. You Things get a happen. Weak, you get a weak colony of bees. Who knows? Something mm-hmm. happens. But the uh, so right now. And I'm trying to do, I'm trying to learn beekeeping, period. I'm trying to learn beekeeping, period. But trying to learn natural beekeeping, I don't want to introduce chemicals. I want to develop, I want to go with strong bees. I don't want to ever buy any bees. The bees I have right now came from a swarm of feral bees who were living in a guy's attic uh, that swarmed out of there. And, uh, of course, we don't know where they ultimately originated from. They could have been commercial bees that swarm. But, but I, I the get point it. is that they have survived these years. They are survival on bees. Their own. Nobody was giving them anything, and they were living in the attic of that right. house. So. so, you know, as far as inputs for bees, well, you know, if you go through a dearth, a drought or something, 
Um, right now, you may need to – this last season, I, because I made some mistakes in, in working the hive, I caused my bees to almost starve. So I did supplement them with sugar water at the, you know, some friends of mine basically told me, look, I get it that you're trying to be natural, but if you have dead bees. What good does it do you? <laughs> what good does it do you? I said, you know what, you're right. So, you know, we would have to cross that bridge if we came to it. Uh, and hopefully by that time, I will be learned it enough and experienced and skilled enough in beekeeping uh, to, 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 come out of it all right with a certain number of colonies. But the good news is, even in, a, even in an ultra, ultra survival scenario, every, if, even if we did lose bees, I could get new ones every year. Because unless all the bees died off, there's going to be swarms that mm -hmm. I could catch every year yeah. uh, to, to replace some. So I'm... Um, so it strikes me, y'all let me know in the comments, beekeepers, am I thinking about this wrong? But I'm thinking that bees are some of the most sustainable livestock mm -hmm. uh, that there is, and they can be replenished on their own. Mm -hmm. Final okay. thoughts? Final thoughts? Um, I hope we don't ever have to get to this point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and guys, things can happen. Tommy was laid off one time. And I don't think we had any goats at the time. I think we had gotten rid of all of our goats, so we weren't having to feed goats, but I'm sure we had chickens. So, you know, different things can happen in our life that may not happen in your life, and the same vice versa. If something could happen in your life that's not happening in our life, that would cause you to uh, need to be more sustainable and to not be spending money, because that's what one thing I remember... Um, I had a pretty good stockpile of groceries and stuff, and he was laid off for two months. And that was so helpful because I didn't have to go to the grocery store. You know, um, yeah. now we might not have got to eat exactly what we wanted to eat, but we still had food to eat. So, um, quick reminder while we're talking about this we're not coming to you as experts on sustainability. Mm -mm. We're, we're, we're not. It too. This video is not telling you, here's how to be sustainable with livestock. Follow our quick, easy steps, mm -hmm. and we guarantee, no, no, we don't guarantee anything other than we don't have a clue what it would be like in, in that ultimate yeah, scenario. We don't, we, don't, we don't have a clue. But we're talking about this with you, number one, to help us talk through it, and mm -hmm. get some plans and we've down. gotten some great ideas from y'all we've gotten some great ideas from y'all but we're also talking about it to encourage you to talk about it so we want you in the comments below tell us what we missed in this video um what sort of livestock maybe do you have that we hadn't talked about oh man what about horses well we don't have to worry about that we, we don't have to worry horses. about it because we don't have horses um but uh, give us your thoughts on uh, the, the the livestock, the animals that we've talked about. Any any ideas that may have popped in your head that would help us or help you if you had to sustain those animals. Um, you know, that's what we're doing. We're just trying to talk this through for for us to be ready and you to be ready. And also, we may be talking to a lot of you that don't have any livestock, that don't have any type of animals like that. But you may have a cat. You may have a dog. So there's still you room. You might have a parakeet. You might have a parakeet. I know somebody that does have a bird. Anyway, so, you know, there's a lot of different areas to think about. And, and you, I know when we end this video, I'm going to think of some things that we yeah, missed. as soon as we stop. You know, but anyway, but I want to leave you with this scripture. It's Proverbs 12, 10. A righteous man regards the life as, of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. That's Proverbs 12, 10. 10. You know, we don't have our animals set higher than they should be, but it is our responsibility to take care of them. We have animals that are in captivity, and this is something that we need to think about. Um, and that's what we're doing. We're thinking about it, and we're making plans. We don't have so, any trouble eating our critters, but the we want them to have really wonderful lives. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people all the time, it's like my pigs. Uh, my pigs have great lives in one bad day. Mm -hmm. and uh, and that's the way it ought to be. And um, and we want to care for them and thinking about how we could care for them in a situation where uh, we had no income, no electricity, things of that nature. That's so, right. well, yeah. that's another sustainable Saturday in the books. Are you ready? I'm going to throw you a curve right here. What's next? 
Well, I'm, I'm thinking sustainable cooking is going to be next. Okay. Cooking and preserving is going to be next. That's I've, good. I've been... That means I get a day off. You get a day off? Yeah, because what, what do I know? <laughs> and you get to eat. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So thanks, you, thanks for watching, you guys. We appreciate you hanging out with us. We said this was going to be a short one. Well... 30 minutes. If we hurry up, we'll end below 31 minutes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Hey, give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe for this kind of content and really a wide variety of content. We That's appreciate right. every one of you. Thanks. Thank you.